was in it. Expecto Patronum! You'll be hearing from us. From the strategic homeland and... Just call us My shield. user has information that could... Well, could make this free system again. <gasps> Smash. And here we go. Go? Go well, sir. It's good to see you, Rich. Good seeing you, too. It's been a week back from the dead. I know. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that was that was horrible. Uh, I had strep throat. That sucks. Yeah. It was... Uh, it, I don't even know how I got it, because I didn't... I don't know anybody else who had strep throat, as far as I, I guess, as far I, I as I know, know. I could be out in public and maybe, and who knows, but yeah, over it's, it now. Well, it's airborne, they say, or something like That's that. That's true, so. it is airborne, because it's contagious until, it, it, there's only a certain period of time where it's contagious. Right. So, um, thankfully, that's over with, because not only did I feel terrible, but I had gotten some of the worst night's sleep Ugh. because of the swollen tonsils and everything like that. Like, my, my, <laughs> my poor wife. She had to go, she slept in the guest bedroom because oh. she's like, it just, you were snoring so loud. And oh, I don't yeah. snore. So she yeah. was just like, it was so incredibly loud it. because yeah. of the blockage and everything. So, uh, but we're back and yeah. we're ready to go and we're excited. And I think to, uh, I think to, to kick things off, we, we need to talk about uh, Daredevil. Yeah. Geek Show episode 15. Uh, back from the dead. Maybe that back might. from the dead. That might be the, <laughs> yeah. that might be the title for the episode. I still like podcasts without fear. That's that. All right, or the show without fear, or something. I like think podcast without fear works. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I think that works. So, but yeah, Daredevil. So, did you finish Daredevil? Oh, yeah, yeah, I finished Daredevil, and I know you finished Daredevil. Oh too, yeah, because you finished that. You were probably a couple episodes ahead of me. Yeah, but I finished Daredevil on. I think I finished Daredevil on either Monday or Tuesday. One of the two. Yeah, I can't no, remember or did when you, I finished it. Whenever it was, it was only like a few hours behind when you finished it. Yeah, because I, I had taken a couple of days to, to... Yeah, as much as I wanted to sit there and watch it all at once, like, I just, I needed to... Yeah. I needed to take a little bit of a break in between. Yeah. I, 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 I maybe, wa- I think I watched one episode at work on my lunch. Did you really? I think. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, but a lot of my coworkers, I, and that was the question I was asking all my coworkers, mm. did you watch Daredevil yet? Did you watch Daredevil yet? Because I didn't want to, I wanted to talk to somebody about it, but I didn't want to spoil it for anybody. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, because there's some significant things that happen in there. There's and... some amazing things. So uh, we're going to preface this by saying we're going to be, we're going to be talking spoilers. Yes. So at this point, if you have not watched, which is conceivable, you may want to stop the podcast here. Well, even if, it, even if you haven't watched it yet, you, you, you have seen spoilers already because as soon as, as soon as, it premiered. Yeah. I saw reviews of the entire season up on last Friday. That's, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, last Friday, as soon as it premiered, I saw reviews of the entire season already posted from, like, so they must IGN have, and all these they other They must places. have gotten access to it early. Yeah. How do we get on that list? Well, I know that there was, like, a big special premiere for Daredevil out in uh, out in Los Angeles. And right. I think people who were part, who subscribed to... Uh, the um, Marvel Unlimited or whatever it is that nine ninety nine a month yeah. comic package from them right. got special passes to go see it. So I mean, if you live in L A. and you subscribe to like Marvel Unlimited, then uh, <laughs> <laughs> then you you get some nice perks. You, I mean, what is it with California? You got, they, they got to go to the the big Marvel announcement and everything too. Oh man! You know, so ten I bucks gotta... a month and you get lots of special. Treatment. Are you sure? I mean, is that something that's 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 positive? Because if it is. <laughs> I mean, I'll I'll sneak I'll sneak another ten bucks out of my allowance. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to get out of California for all these events. Oh, Christ! And there's where the big money comes there into play. Goes. But I mean, what was your overall take on it? Uh, my overall take on it was I thought that it was a really really good adaptation of Daredevil. I thought it stayed very true to the yep. comics. I thought it was super duper dark. Yeah. Um, which I think it needed to be um, yeah. because the Daredevil comics were always really dark and gritty and v- just violent because Daredevil, I mean, besides his ability to, like, see without sight and everything, right. he's just a guy. And I think that they portrayed that really well, especially with some of the fight scenes. And I think that it needs to be said that the fight choreography yeah. was amazing and in that, that show. And that one, just that when he goes to get that kid. Oh, the hallway? The, the one, it's just one long take. Yes. That's it. Well, how amazing was that? I remember watching that, and I was, and I, I felt like it was so realistic because how many times have we watched um, one of these Marvel movies or something right. like that? 
or even Agents of Shield with Agent May or somebody right. that's a, very, a really skilled fighter. Right. You know, taking on somebody and it's like one kick, one punch, going through, you know, breaking down the walls and stuff right. like that. Where he, you see him getting drained because he's fighting yeah. bad guy after bad guy after bad guy. Right. And at the end of the fight, he's like throwing himself behind, you know, into the punches, into the guy, right. you know. And the and you know what was re- more really realistic about that scene is the bad guys got back up. Yeah. Because you know how often do uh, does a bad guy get knocked down and just stay down? It right. happens in movies and TV all the time. Right. This was way more realistic. They 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 got back up and continued fighting. Yes. So that was phew, that was, was awesome. awesome. Yeah. I mean, I and I agree with you all all through that. It was it was a fantastic series and i mean it, it, it i mean and all the easter eggs i mean i always love those easter eggs a lot of crazy easter eggs there were some too. crazy easter eggs i mean obviously the electra one you could tell they had a lot of fun with it yeah there was i mean i i can't i saw i i heard the electra easter egg yeah 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 you know did you catch the uh did you catch the uh she hulk one no i didn't when they mentioned the paralegal in like episode two or three? Oh no see i thought like, you know what somebody had mentioned to me, why She-Hulk hadn't gotten any uh, sort of attention yet in the MCU. And I said, I don't know if she's big enough that she could carry a movie on her own, but they could put her into a television show. Yeah, they could know? do something like that. So I mean, that would be kind of interesting. I mean, that like like the comics where it's not really, you know, that could be like the fun side of Marvel because yeah. her comics were always kind of fun and goofy. And they that, were, yeah, yeah. You know, it, does, it didn't have to be a nitty gritty kind of thing. Um, you know, yeah, she's, you know, she's well, super She's always a Hulk. They could include her in something like that because she's part of, I believe she's part of the whole A-Force line that Marvel is coming out, which is the team of all female Avengers. So. Yes. Yeah, that would be really cool. I think, you know where I think she'd fit in really good? Where? As I think that she'd fit in really well as part of, uh, as part of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think that they could throw her in as like a, as like a team member or somebody that, that they go to. That would be cool. That would be really good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause you get that, you know, you get a Hulk. Yeah. But, you know, not obviously the Hulk, mm-hmm. but still somebody who's, you know, w- you know, she's going to cause some damage. She's going to hurt some. You know, people. it makes me wonder, though, because you, you saw the news uh, from this past week about um, about Hulk and Mark Ruffalo yeah. went on record of saying that why there hasn't been a solo film. Yeah. And why there's no plans for one right now. Be- and it's because Marvel doesn't own the rights to produce a solo Hulk film. They can put him in any movie or television show that they want, and they can put them in as many as they want, but they can't produce a solo film because Universal owns the rights to a solo Hulk project, which I thought was crazy, but if you look on IMDb, sure enough, Universal is the one who uh, put up the money to put out that Edward Norton Hulk movie. It was Marvel It was Marvel through and through, right? but Universal... Universal ponied up the money. Exactly, which makes sense because back then... Because Iron Man and, and that Hulk movie came out at the same exact time. Right. And Iron Man was still technically an independent film because Marvel Studios was very small. Yeah. You know? Um, but, I mean, obviously we know what happened with that and everything, but I just I just didn't realize. Yeah. I never, I you never, know? yeah. Because it has the whole Marvel feel to it. But it also, to me, explains a lot more about, about why... Um, Edward Norton w- isn't in the Avengers, right? Because you know there was the big discrepancy where he wanted uh, the ability to write and change things in the script, mm-hmm. which he was probably able to do and get away with with a Universal um, produced film, right? But he's not going to get away with that. They're like, no, we got Joss Whedon. Go away, Ed Norton. Go away. Just play your part. Yeah, you know. So, but uh, that m- leads me to believe, like, is is She Hulk able to be used in that manner? You know what I mean? Right. So. I mean, it's a fine line with all these, with all of these crazy, like you know, rights to certain characters and everything. You yeah. know, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch can exist in both the 20th Century Fox X Men universe and the Marvel universe, and it's just it's all screwy. The, yeah. the lines are so weird. It's it is, and I mean, look, I mean, look at all the the the, the brouhaha they had to go through to get Spider Man. Exactly, but, but they I got mean, him. Yeah, they got him, and they should have gotten him because, you know, Sony's doing Jack. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just they're not doing anything with them exactly so you might as well give it back to the people who know what to do yeah exactly you which know? is what they should do with these hulk things yeah yeah i mean universe i mean universal the only reason you the the second hulk movie made any kind of money was because marvel was a part of it right and knew how to write the character yeah they just made it they just made it into more of a of a hulk film yeah. it was almost like they were like um we're gonna place it after that horrible Eric Bana film. Yeah. 
um it is going to you know he he's it's kind of it's kind of part of it but not really you right. know what i mean um but you know they still talk about it and that was one of the easter eggs that i saw in daredevil hanging in uh the reporter's office. In they ben had the, office. Yeah, they had the Battle of New York yeah. headline one page, and then yeah. the other one was like Terror in Harlem, which yeah. is, that's the Hulk. Yes. Because that's what happened. Yeah. That, I mean, it's all connected there. It's all connected, and so. it's all crazy. And then his, you know, uh, Daredevil's father, Battle and Jack, yeah. you know, fights Carl Creel. We saw him in the first or first the two first... episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this season. One or, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as the absorbing man. Yep. Um, so that's connected there. But I like how they made there was a, oh, the young Creel. You know, I think that was just to make people go, wait a minute. Yeah. Pressure Creel can't be fighting at that point, but he was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love the way it's all connected. And can we talk about Vincent D'Onofrio? Oh, my God. So good. Holy cow. He was. Wow. That was, I mean, that was, I, I, he's always really put himself into any role that he's had. Yeah. But that was just amazing you know what i think that they did really well with him was that throughout until you get to the very last episode he seems like a guy who well, obviously full of rage right obviously yeah um Definitely but he's up issues he's a guy who loves his city yes. he loves his city you can't take that away from him his methods of trying to make the city better right a little bit unorthodox, but then again, so are Daredevil's methods. Blur, blurring the, yeah, you very know? blurring the Because they're, they're, they're both kind of walking on the same rope at this point. Right. Until you get to the end, and then the realization, that whole fantastic speech that he gives in the back of the, uh, of the armored cop car right. about the Good Samaritan, and he's comparing himself to that story from the Bible, and he said, and I realized, I always thought I was the Samaritan helping and i realized that i'm not that i'm the ill intent he's not even comparing himself to a person he's comparing himself to cataclysmic events that yes. happen to people he is he is an event yes like that's how big the king is yes and right yes definitely Ugh. i mean and and that was another thing i liked about daredevil i mean daredevil the whole catholic thing you know his faith and having to yeah. justify what he does you know, with what he believes and, and it, you know, and the thing, you know, with the priest and mm -hmm. going and talking to him and going to confession and all that, uh, it all just wove together fantastically. Yeah. And then, you know, D'Onofrio, you know, with, with Fisk, you know, are we allowed to say his name? I know they can't say his <laughs> yeah, name. Yeah, you know? we're, we're allowed. We're allowed. He okay. can't touch us. Yeah, he can't touch us. We're, he's behind bars right now. Come get us. Yeah. Don't come um, get us. <laughs> don't come get us. <laughs> but Fisk, yeah, I mean, and, and you know, and with that whole thing with, you know, relay, you know, just uh, the story from the Bible with ill intent and everything, yeah. and, and malcontent, and it's, um, you know, it all just works. I love it. I uh, mean, it was so it was so dark, and there was parts of it that were just so evil. Yes, and they are introducing. I mean, whatever they're doing, because I think that with these television shows, because um, Agents of Shield ha has its flaws. Yes, um, and it has its it has the things that it has to get over. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Right. Um, which I think Daredevil has done, as being a Netflix show, has done wonders for. Because I think this these television shows that they're doing on Netflix tie way more into the MCU. Yeah. And they're just opening up the floodgates for insanity, as far right. as I'm concerned. Because the things that they talked about and the things that were going on, that, that Nobu guy, who was clearly yeah. part of the hand. Right. Um, you know... Um, and they're what they're demon ninjas or something like that from yeah. another from another dimension. Um, so that's a force that is gonna be coming from there. And then uh, the Chinese woman uh, Gao, yeah, or whatever, mentioned uh, going to a place not of this earth or something like that. Right. So that's got to be. Um, that's got to be. Uh, what is it? It's wherever Iron Fist got his powers oh, yeah, from, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I forget the name of it. Okay. Uh, Forgive us for that. Yes. There's just so much going there's, on. Yeah, there, I mean, I mean, yeah. There's I mean, just, you're talking about martial arts, and you're talking about mysticism. mysticism. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, and they're going to open the door with that with Doctor Strange, so I can see that totally fitting in yep. with that and everything. And then where are they going to go? Because I believe in the fall is when we get the whole AKA Jessica Jones story. Yeah. So I wonder where that's going to go. And, and we've already seen pictures from Jessica Jones right. popping up online. We've seen David Tennant yep. uh, as the Purple Man. Yep. Uh, we've seen, um, 
oh, I can't remember the actor's name, uh, who plays... Um, oh, Mike Coulter as yeah, Luke Cage. Luke Cage. Yep. Yeah, Mike Coulter. Well, he looked really great as Luke Cage, yeah. too, I thought. I mean, they're just like little stupid shots and everything, but you can tell that they're they're doing really well. I mean, it's as, it's as, it's as good as the shots that we got of Matt Murdock. Right. You know, oh, here's Matt Murdock. Oh, it looks like a guy sitting on a bench with sunglasses on. Yeah. With, in a suit. Yeah. Great. Yeah, he looks just like him. Like, you did, know, you see like, the, did you see the meme of that? <laughs> I did, I did. did. We, we, I posted it on the uh, the X-Jock Facebook page if you, if you want to see it. Basically, it's just Matt Murdock sitting there with his glasses and his stick, and the caption reads, just sitting here waiting for a season two. Oh, speaking of social media, let's just I just want to give a shout out oh, to yeah. our uh, all of our new Twitter followers. We got a flood of them. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Thanks for giving us a follow. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, we're at XJock Albany and uh, just give us a follow. We post all our news updates. We live tweet. It's it's a it's yeah. a big party. Yeah, we do a Tuesday usually we do a Tuesday night tweet session. I was doing a little bit on Wednesday during Arrow this week because yeah. there was some big stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, I wasn't able to do that. Um uh Usually, you know, you know, if I because because I work weird hours, I work retail, I yeah. work for Rich is a gigolo. I, I work for a company <laughs> whose whose logo is a fruit piece of fruit, so uh, I you know I work all kinds of weird hours. Yeah. So, uh, when I can, I will. You know, I usually we, and we were and that was one thing that we were weren't running into an issue with with the live tweeting. We were <laughs> yeah. both tweeting at the same time. We're not Flash. only tweeting at the same time, but like tweeting like almost the same exact thing because yeah. that just shows how. In tune How, with. Yeah, exactly. So we've decided that BJ will do the Flash. Right. I will do Agents of Shield. Right. Unless I'm working, in which case BJ will do the Flash and do Agents of Shield. <laughs> yeah. And Arrow on Wednesdays, unless yeah. I'm free and he can't do it or something right. like that. But we'll 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 figure it out. Right. But so you know, but what Tuesday? So right now, for sure, Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights. Starting at 8 p.m. Yep. Eastern time. Join our conversation. Yep. The Flash and Agents, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you're on the West Coast and you don't want spoilers, yeah, don't. Too, too bad. Too bad. I had to explain that to somebody while I was doing some live tweeting. I did some live tweeting from our account and my personal account during Arrow this week, and somebody was like, um, spoilers, and I said, um, it's called live tweeting. Tough shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hashtag tough shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, I th- well, you know what? I think I think we've said what we had to say about Daredevil and everything like that. But yeah. I think that since we mentioned it with Agents of Shield, um, we should mention the fact that they are already preparing a spinoff. Yes. For that series. Yep. Um, which I think is a bold move because Agents of Shield, as much as you and I enjoy it, yeah. And I know other people enjoy it too. There are a lot more people that don't really like it. They don't like the format. They aren't a big fan of where the stories are going and things like that. Right. Which, um, you know what, everybody's entitled to their opinions and everything. Um, the ratings haven't been great for this show. Right. But it's a Marvel property on an a- on ABC, and they're both owned by Disney. Disney's not going to pull the plug on something like this. So right. they're, they're pitching a spinoff, and this spinoff could be out as soon as this fall. Wow. Yeah, that's how quick they're moving with this. Yeah. So it got me thinking about the potential... Uh, Things that it could spin off of because Shield has kind of, if you're caught up on Shield, it's kind of shot off in a bunch of different directions. You've yeah. got, um, you've got Fitz is out, um, on his own. You've yeah. got Coulson and Hunter, yeah, are out on their own right now. They're gonna meet up with Fitz though, right? Eventually, Sky is off in Inhuman Land. Yeah, uh, she's learning all the tricks of the trade, and she met up with her mother yeah, and her that, father. That was a big ass. Shoe that was drop. A, that. That was a big one. That was a. Ma- I, I'm like, is she gonna tell her? Is she gonna tell her? And right. then drops the shoe. I'm like, oh, has to do. It. Yeah, she had to. Do she it. had How to. Could she, she had not? no choice. Right. Um. So she's off in her own and doing her thing. And then you have, uh, you know, Mac and Bobby and the real Shield are kind of have infiltrated, um, the base. Where May and Simmons right. are all held up. I mean, that, that and that's so, another thing. I mean, are they? I mean, could they be considered the real Shield? Is Coulson more the real Shield? I, see. I think I, I, that's the thing. I mean, because obviously they're setting it up because Gonzalez and his Shield with mm-hmm. Mac and Bobby are obviously anti uh, superpower. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't think she totally is, but but Gonzalez is is definitely. Yeah. I don't know if he's anti superpowers or he's he he doesn't want them to be able to live and do things on their own. They need to be in. They need, somebody needs to keep them in check, which is a huge yeah. huge theme for Civil War. So they're setting that up right now, right? Uh, really, really yeah. big. And and Coulson is more of the, uh, 
you know, the, uh, you know, they should be, you know, these, these are people, these are, you know, these are humans. They're just gifted. We should embrace them. They should be treated just like yeah. any other person. So we've basically got the lines drawn. So we've got Coulson, who's on the side of Captain America in right. the comic books. And then you've got Gonzalez, who is on the side of Tony Stark, Iron Man, in the comic books for Civil War. Right. Exactly. And Peter Parker caught in the middle. Right. Because he was basically the catalyst. And now that he's back, right. I mean, everything's just falling into place. Exactly. It's, there's, it's all, hashtag, it's all connected. But the, but that got me thinking about like just like they have there's so many offshoots yeah and then you're gonna have Age of Ultron which happens in just a couple weeks <laughs> um and that's gonna have repercussions for yep. Agents of Shield yeah you know um I I think there's gonna be some crossover with something going on there that that does something for that we'll right. have to wait and see um but it got me thinking about all the different different shows that they could possibly do you know yeah are they could they or would they do a show focused on Inhumans. Like, they can't do... They're not going to do a show called Inhumans. Right. You know what I mean? Because they've got Inhumans coming out in 2019. Right. Um, and it wouldn't make sense to have a TV show and then a movie called the same name. Especially when the movie is going to feature much better, stronger, powerful yes. Inhumans. Oh, yeah. But, you know, what? one of the things that, that I thought that maybe they could do, and it wouldn't be exactly on par, but I, I think it would be, like, Nick Fury's, like, Secret Warriors... Because um, mm -hmm. you already have you already have uh, Sky, aka Daisy Ridley, aka Quake, who is yeah. a member of that, and the Secret Warriors are basically Shield agents with special powers. Right. Um, you also have uh, um, you, we got him back in the last episode. We have uh, Deathlock. Yep. Who is a you know a man made yeah super powered person, but yep. he could also fit onto that team if it's more of like a Coulson's right Secret Warriors right. Um, and you know who else? is going to be part of it, we don't know, um, because there's a lot that could be introduced uh, because of the results of Age of Ultron yeah. and yeah. everything like that. But I think I think Secret Warriors could be a route that they go. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad route to go either because it's got, like, you know, like like uh, secondary and third-level right. super-powered people in it, which yeah. is doable for television. Um, another one that I thought would be really cool if they did, but I doubt it, wouldn't it be cool if they did something about Agents of S.W.O.R.D.? Like, they could do S.W.O.R.D.? S.W.O.R.D.? Sword, yeah, the one, the uh, the people they have the base up uh, uh up above the earth, and they kind of are like the people who keep everything in check from coming in from outer space and stuff like that. I I am totally lost on oh, that yeah, one. Oh yeah, you have I'm to look there. up sword. I'm gonna have to. Oh wow. But it's like uh yeah, it's it's really cool. Agents of sword. It's almost like space shield. Um, <laughs> okay. so it would be it would be really cool. I in uh, if anybody watched Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, um, Carol Danvers. Um, was actually a part of S.W.O.R.D. before she joined up with the Avengers. Okay. So, yeah. I, All right, I'm going to have to go on the Marvel Wiki and, and look it up, or download yeah. the Marvel Sword Wiki would app. be really, really cool. Uh, okay. That would be It would be interesting to see them do that. And with everything with Guardians of the Galaxy, and yeah. they're kind of like getting a little bit more galactic, I think yeah. that they could totally pull that off. Um, and what was that? There was a couple other ones, too, that I thought. I thought that maybe they could even... They could even delve into like secret Avengers or something like that, but I think that's a little bit I think that's a little bit too big for a television show. But yeah. there's obviously a lot of options they could go with, even just the ones in house if they spin right. off with like something. I mean, yeah, I mean there's they've got, there's a ton of characters that they could throw together if they really wanted to, if they wanted to do some kind of superhero uh show. Um or even if they well, I doubt they'd do anything like damage control. That was no. That was I always liked that. Kind oh, of what that. about th Thunderbolts? <laughs> that oh, would, that yeah. would be cool. Yeah, they could do. They could do uh, some sort of version of Thunderbolts. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've they've got an entire catalog to pull from. So I, I mean, yeah. At this point, and and we, and we really haven't heard any kind of rumors, right. Of what's coming out. So well, my money is on they're gonna focus on, uh, on the Inhumans and Sky. Right. They're gonna spin her off into her own thing. And it could it could be sort of like Secret Warriors. Okay, that's what I think. All right, I I will go along with that just because I I mean with everything going on I just have no clue <laughs> what they could pull from and it's just so much stuff. Yeah, yeah, and it's a little I like I said I think it's very bold of them to say hey we're gonna do a spinoff already. Yeah, when the show has kind of hit some bumps in the road along the right. way. But, I mean, it, season two is a lot better than what season one started out to be. Right. I think the biggest issue that people have with it is, uh, I, I think the biggest issue is is the, is the, uh, just the taste that the first 
half of probably season one left in a lot of people's mouths. Right. Um, cause I mean, yeah, I, I like agents of agents of shield, but I'm more into it than like the casual observer who right. might watch it on television. You you're, know? Yeah. Cause you're more along the lines of you like looking at the, the minutia, the nuances, you know, the yeah. Easter egg, all the stuff that kind of, you know, right. Brings it all together. That makes it more like the Marvel universe, mm-hmm. that, you know, Oh, he said this, this alludes to this, you know, right. Drives Vera crazy. Yeah. If you, if you, right. and if you go to X jock, albanyny.com i actually wrote an article about an easter egg that sky threw out there during uh i I can't remember if it was beginning of season two or end of season one where no it was beginning of season two i believe yeah she had mentioned uh her contact uh chip okay nickname microchip yeah yeah. punisher Mm -hmm. so maybe the punisher uh could, you know, maybe not on television, but that's definitely could be a Netflix. God, I would, I would love to see them do something with the Punisher, you if, know? If they could get Tom Jane back, because Tom Jane has said he would love to come back. He won't do TV, though. I like, bet he would do Netflix. I remember because they, they had a... I forget what they approached him for that he turned down. I'll have to look it up. But at one point, they approached him for a television show, and he said, I don't do TV. I'm willing to bet... If they approached him for Netflix for a Punisher series, yeah, and they said it can be, you know, ju- it can be like Daredevil, mm-hmm. you know, you can have that, you know, you can have some of that gore, you can have the fighting, you can have all that kind of stuff, the, all the high action in that. Yeah, I'm willing to bet Tom Jane would say, "Where do I sign?" Right. I, I mean, they could bring him back. I think it would be really cool if they if they had like him, uh, if they had him pop up at some point. Uh, in Civil War, because he played a he played a pretty interesting part in the Civil War comic books, mm-hmm. you know, where he was, uh, you know, not exactly, no, he's not exactly a hero. He's an anti-hero. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's uh, the anti-hero. Exactly. So, uh, you know, if you haven't read Civil War, read Civil War. It's yeah. very, very good. Um, but you'll see what I'm talking about with the Punisher. Yeah, go to Barnes & Noble. They've got it. Yeah. You know, they got the graphic novel, the whole series there. Yeah. Especially with Infinity Gauntlet, you yeah. can get all caught up with everything. Yeah. They have an Amazon, too. Which Am- is there's Amazon. Where I got it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Shipped right to my house. Boom. Laziness. Big, big They're lazy. encouraging it. They're, they really are. Yeah, they are. <laughs> if, they, I can get it, if I can get it through Prime and ship to my house, I'm done. I'm not why, going to the store. Not, Forget yeah. it. Yeah. So, um, so moving on from that, I mean, let's... Going from the small screen, let's go to the big screen. Okay. All right, we talked Daredevil. We talked Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on the small screen. Yep. Now we've got Age of Ultron. Yeah. Just a few days away, a few weeks away. A few weeks away at this point. And we've gotten so much stuff in the last couple weeks. Too much stuff. They're, le- they're, they're putting clips out now, and I have, I have not watched one of them. I, I watched, like, one clip, and then I was like, yeah, I have to stop now. Right, right. I ha- and you know what? You, you know what movie I did this for when it came out? I did this for... Um, I did that for um, Return of the King when that when that movie right. first came out. Um, I was online. They had clips from all over the place. So before I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the midnight showing of Return of the King. Before right. I'm doing it, I'm getting myself psyched up, and I'm just watching all these clips over and over and over again. And I, so I, I mean, I've already seen them. I don't want to see any of Age of Ultron right. besides what I've seen in the trailer, which for me, Looks I believe, great. is about probably the first 45 minutes to an hour of a three-hour film. I think that. Uh, well, I don't even think it's that. I, much. I don't know. I just, I just, I just, I don't want. I just don't want to see anything. Yeah. I want. I want to get to the theater. I want to be eating my popcorn. And I want to be like, oh yeah, and you know, yeah. just like be happy go lucky fan. And and I don't know anything. Yeah. You know. So that's the way I feel. I'm not watching the clips. Yeah. I'm not watching. Stop any, putting them up, Marvel. I'm I'm not watching any more either. But I mean the the I mean we we get, finally got to see the vision. Yeah. Which is awesome. It is awesome. That character poster is so, so good. I know. And they had a shot of not only, you know, not only of him from the front, but also, you know, you see his cape. Yeah. And everything. I mean, and the, even the cape looked cool. I mean, they just did. They, he looks like um, a movie adaptation of Vision from the comics because, yeah. you know, they did a really good job of, of fitting him into what things look like currently in the Marvel yeah. Cinematic Universe. Yes. I mean, very, very good. Yeah, and it looks awesome, and I cannot wait to see this. This Absolutely. is going to be, and we have yet to see him in any really, in really any of the clips. Oh no, fighting I, or anything. I, you know what? They 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 released the final trailer, and it didn't have a minute, which leads me back to a discussion we had a few episodes ago, which was saying that you know I think that they were going to leave most of the vision stuff for the movie. 
Yeah. You weren't going to see that till the movie. Yeah. You know. So I believe I think he is uh I think that he's going to start out as a creation of Ultron though. They've kind of left that up in the air. Like a lot of people think that maybe Tony Stark and Bruce Banner are going to create him in order to battle Ultron, but I think they're going to kind of leave it true to the comics. I think Ultron is going to create the Vision. Hmm. Which would be interesting to see. I could be totally wrong. Yeah, there, I mean, but I, I think why would they? Why would they screw with that? Yeah, because I mean, they've already gone gone against you know comic canon in regards to it was Hank Pym. Yeah. that created Ultron. Right. And this one, Tony Stark. Right. But then again, who's to say that it can't be you know Hank Pym with Tony Stark that created Ultron? You know, because mm-hmm. Ant Man comes out right after. Right. Exactly. I mean, that could be a way of basically segging into Ant Man. Yeah. To bridge everything, you know. I mean that. Speaking of first looks, we got another Ant Man trailer, which yep. gave us a first look at uh, at uh, Yellow Jacket. Yep. Um, who is actually Darren Cross? Right. Um, yeah. Well, and, and you had posted a story on yeah. X Jock about you know, people settling down because Yellow Jacket was a separate person. Yeah. Well, because for those of you who don't know, in the comics, Yellow Jacket appears, and he, I think, doesn't he tell the Avengers that he he killed Hank Pym? Correct. I think he somehow convinces them that he killed so, Hank Pym yeah. or something like that. When in reality, Hank Pym has just kind of gone off the rocker yeah. and has taken on this aggressive, uh, violent persona, the Yellow Jacket. And, you know, it's it's the anti-Ant-Man right. pretty much because Ant-Man is all, you know, let's, you know, let's use force last and let's like really get to the ish- let's get down to the issues let's get all the facts you know what i mean right whereas yellow jacket is shoot first ask questions later um but everybody was freaking out because they're like you can't make yellow jacket a separate person to which i said look at the movie okay mm-hmm. ant-man is scott lang yes. scott lang is not yellow jacket okay so why would you have paul rudd who is playing scott lang uh just all of a sudden take on that role as well where it makes more sense because it seems like in this movie, Hank Pym's technology has been taken over by Darren Cross's company. Okay, right. so he has it. The only thing Hank Pym has laying in his possession right. is the Ant Man suit. The one thing that Cross wants. Exactly. But it would make sense to me that maybe Hank Pym was developing a second suit, the Yellow Jacket suit. You know what I mean? Right. Which he gets his hands on, and he's the inevitable villain. So you have Ant Man facing Yellow Jacket. You know, and, and that just makes sense to me the yeah. way that they're going about it. Like you can't just you can't nitpick like that because because the way that they're going, Hank Pym is not a hero in this. You right. know what I mean? He is an older figure. Yeah. He is a mentor figure, and he's just there, uh, you know, kind of like to teach Scott Lang right. how to be the Ant Man. Right. So, I mean, I, what I'm getting from the movie too. I mean, I'm, and this is just based on the trailers that Hank was Ant Man at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, he he was part of the Marvel superhero universe. Absolutely. But then decide, you know, I just can't do it anymore, and now here we are. Yeah. With you know, with Paul Rudd's character mm-hmm. Scott Lang. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and I could, that I mean that seems that flows for me. It does. You know, and then, yeah, with Cross coming in, maybe he, you know, he steals the plans or he finds the plans mm-hmm. hidden somewhere or he finds a prototype or whatever, kind of like what, uh, 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 what's his name from the Iron Man movie there? Uh, Jeff oh. Bridges' character. Oh, Obadiah. Obadiah Stane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, so, yeah, there you go. Yeah. But, I mean, so, you know, you kind of get, you get that feel. We get a little bit more out of Ant-Man. You see Yellow Jacket and yeah. Ant-Man fighting, and it's very... It's a very good scene. It's very funny. I think Ant-Man is going to do a lot of what kind of Guardians of the Galaxy did, where there is a lot of humor yep. put into it. Yep. I mean, because you got to kind of poke fun at yourself. Ant-Man is lame. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I have zero interest in Ant-Man as a character. Right. I have interest in Hank Pym as a scientist. Right. But Ant-Man as a character, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a guy. He shrinks himself down. Yeah. He does little whimsical things. He you know communicates with ants and <laughs> flies around on ants and everything. I mean, how can you? How can? How could they make that character? Like, could you imagine if uh, if uh, Christopher Nolan mm-hmm. had made that and tried to make it as serious as like the Dark Knight yeah, trilogy? Yeah, you really could. You could. There's no way you could do that. You couldn't really. do You that. have to poke no. fun at a character like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, but but know? the fight scene that they showed was cool. I mean, being able, you know. 
he, he's small and then he's you know right then he's big and then he's small again and he's whipping guys over which and, is exactly what happens and what he does in the comic books right so they're I think that they're gonna I think they're doing a very good job with it but I think that they know that it can't be an entirely serious yeah. film at the same time yeah. there is gonna be some serious parts with it yeah you don't you know I mean there's there's gonna be some serious parts but I mean a lot of the time I think it's gonna be you know it's gonna seem funny the way that things are happening right so but, but I mean I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not like, I don't think it's, I think that Ant-Man is going to have the same kind of, uh, I think Ant-Man is, might have the same kind of vibe as a phase one film for me. Right. Um, where it's, it's going to be, it's going to be good, but it's not going to be as outstanding as Guardians or Winter Soldier right. or something it's like kinda, that. It's kind of, so. it's kind of more like an epilogue on phase two. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. I think they have to introduce him. This is when they're choosing to do so. Right. So. All right. So, um. Keeping with the Marvel uh, in the movies, uh, going over to X Men Apocalypse. Okay. Ben Hardy confirmed to be playing Angel or Archangel. Right. Um, from the picture, I'm guessing it's Archangel. That is so cool to see the metal wings. Yes. Very, very cool. I wonder um, if they're going to have the, the, the metal feathers shoot out as blades like they did in the comics. <laughs> that would be interesting. That would be kind of interesting. Yeah. I'm just so happy because I love Archangel. Like, that was like right in like. When I was like loving comic books, yeah, like right about like that when was, I was that starting was a Chris to get into Claremont it, yeah, time when you know? he was writing and mm-hmm. uh, oh, I can't even remember who was drawing at the time. I don't remember, but yeah, it was Claremont. Would pretty much had all the X books, yeah, you know, at that time, and that run was so good, and yeah. just some of those characters, like, and I mean, and that's why I mean, I credit th- those X Men comic books are why. I love comic books. Yes. Just because they're just so, oh, they're so awesome. Yeah. Correct. And I was talking to you about this too, because uh, it's a topic for another time, but like, you know, like about the first comic you ever read. And that was those, those comics, that X-Men. Right. Number one reissue. Yeah. From like, I think it was 1990 or something like that. Right. Yeah. That was the first comic book that I actually ever like picked up, bought, read, and was like, I need more. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> like I need more of this. And yes. then that, you know, unlocked the obsession. And then I got into Spider-Man and all that other stuff. Right. Cause before that it was just Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they also, uh, other news that came out too, uh, recently, uh, Olivia Munn yeah. has been cast as Psylocke. That, I'm pumped about that too, because yeah. we've talked about how they should include Psylocke. Yeah. Before. And this is good. They must listen to our podcast. They have to listen. They must be listening. Kevin Feige's our biggest fan. All right, Kevin. Thank you. Especially because we don't like DC that much. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, I think that's a pretty good choice. I do. I do too. I think that she's fine. There's a lot of, uh, backlash on the internet, you know, questioning her acting ability. You know what I mean? Which, I mean, I haven't seen much of her in. She's got the geek cred because she was on G4 and things yeah. like that. G4, yeah. You know? I mean, that's the only reason. But G4 right. still sucked. Oh, yeah. I hate G4. Yeah. yeah I'll, 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 I'll go into a long diatribe about that if you like. <laughs> but, I mean, Screw you, G4! <laughs> well, they're, they're no longer around. Good. So Bye. Fine. <laughs> Good riddance. Your hatred can go somewhere, <laughs> somewhere else, pal. I've team. turned to the dark side when it comes to G4. <laughs> Screw them. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think she is a good choice. We'll have to wait and see how everything plays out. But you see, actually, I think it was uh, either yesterday or the day before she actually tweeted out a, or not tweeted out. She Instagram a picture of herself in what looked to be like the nineties Psylocke like uniform. It was only a little, it was like a shot of part of her leg right. where you could see like she was wearing like the purple spandex, like leotard. And right. then she had like a glove on. Yeah. And I was like, and just the caption said, if the spandex fits. And that's like that was all it said. And I was like, oh, I said, so she's into it. I said, she's really into it. And I said, that's really good. Um, something that I was reading about online is that this might be not a Brian Singer casting choice. Okay. This might be like a studio casting choice. Like mm-hmm. we were saying, because Olivia Munn, Olivia Munn is gorgeous, yes. first of all. Oh, she yeah. is a very, very pretty lady. Oh, yes. Um, and so that is going to make the nerdy people who go and see this movie very happy yeah. to see a pretty lady on the screen. Yeah, because it's not right. like we all have girlfriends or wives or anything. Well, right? I'm saying, like, we're different, <laughs> but I'm saying, like, some of the... Yes, uh, we're, we are the exception to right, the rule. Right, we are the exception. We've landed females. We, we've, it can be done. Yes, it can be done, gentlemen. <laughs> we're telling 14-year-old ourselves, it can be done. <laughs> right. It does get better. Don't worry. Um, But I think, like, that might have a big choice. Plus, Olivia Munn is, you know... She she's she's on newsroom, so she's you know she's yeah. got the name and everything like that. But uh, you know what, Brian Singer, 
has always casted, you know, oddly. You know, yeah. people that you didn't know or thought were going to be good at True. it. True. You know, yeah. so. You may I mean, be surprised. Would you think that that Olivia Munn will have um, a British accent in it, though? Because she is, Eng- she is English. I don't know. You know? Her brother's Captain Britain. Maybe. I would. I mean, I would think she'd have to at yeah. this point. They can't screw that up. Yeah. <laughs> God, no. You can't screw that God, up. no. She's got to have, if she doesn't have an English accent, I'm not going to be mad, but I'll be disappointed. Okay. I'll say that. Uh, I, I'll, I'll i wait. I'll, I mean, either way, I right. mean, I'm, I'm good with it. Yeah, but, I, I think mean, that she's going to be fine. The closest, the, 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 you know, if they keep closer to the comics, I'll be, I'll be happy. If you're fine with Jennifer Lawrence playing this made-up incantation of Mystique that they've thrown out there, yeah, you know what I mean? Because Mystique in this X-Men universe that they're currently doing is nothing like the Mystique in the comic books. So if you're fine with that, then there's no reason why you should have any sort of gripe yeah. with them casting Got Olivia no Lawrence. No reason to Silo. bitch. So, um, but moving on to uh, some other... Uh, Marvel news. Mm-hmm. Ernie Hudson. Uh, that is this a rumor? Or has this been confirmed? Uh, no, this is still just a rumor. There, see, one of the things that I re- read about this is that Ernie Hudson has been reading up a lot of Black Panther comic books lately. Really? And he's apparently pretty jacked at the moment. Ooh. So um, the Good. room. The rumor is that he could be playing King T'Chaka, uh, T'Challa, Black Panther, uh, his father in wow. the Black Panther film. So uh, we know that... Oh, what what is the uh, what is the actor that's playing Black Panther? Oh, Why can I never remember I his name? I can't either, and I was just... Chadwick Boseman. Yes. Chadwick it, Boseman. Chadwick. So Chadwick Boseman is playing T'Challa, and then uh, Ernie Hudson might be playing King T'Chaka, which I'd be perfectly fine with because it would make me think of Ghostbusters, and that just makes me happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, There's mean, no yeah, other explanation. I mean, if we're not going to see... If, if we're not going to see Ernie in Ghostbusters 3, then, you know... We can at least see him in a Marvel right. movie. Or Congo 2. Yeah. You know oh, I mean? God. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Oh, man. I remember thinking, like, when I was younger and I watched that movie, I remember thinking, oh, my God, this is awesome and also terrifying. And then I, I got it on Netflix years ago, and I got it, and I, I had said to somebody, you need to watch this. I said, I remember watching this when I was a kid, <laughs> and it was awesome. Oh. And, oh, was I so you wrong. Were, oh. Terrible movie. The, 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 oh, man, youth. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And, see, that's, like, the separation. Like, what I thought was really good back then, it just does not hold its weight now. Yeah. Except for Pee-wee's Big Adventure still holds <laughs> Yeah, up. that always holds. <laughs> that holds Paul up. Rubens, he's, he's timeless. Exactly. Uh, was there any other Marvel movie? news that we were missing um I mean, I well i know that they they teased out a picture of negasonic teenage warhead oh yeah um, with sitting the... with De- deadpool yeah for that movie um i had not posted oh, posted or shared that um for us yet right um but um it, it you know it it looks good i mean they're they're doing a lot of things with deadpool yeah. recently like you know there's every a t- lot of stuff coming off the photos from the set right and tweets and exactly and instagram i mean ryan's been like Really heavy in doing that stuff. Yeah, I think. Well, I think he just wants people to know that they're doing it and they're they're doing it the right way. Yeah. Um, and I think that they are doing it the right way. Also, I think it was very bizarre the whole thing. They were like, "Get a first look at Colossus and Deadpool," and I was like, "Sweet, I want to see this." Yeah. And it's just a guy in a in a green suit. Yeah. Standing with Deadpool. So he's going to be CG'd. Right, exactly. Which I think is the way that you have to do Colossus. Yeah, you have to do you it know? that way. You can't. Which I, uh, he, was, he was CG'd to a point in uh, in the X-Men movies, yeah. too, when they did that horrible version of Colossus. Okay. But um, they're just going to gonna CG him, and they're going to make him bigger. He's going to be taller. Yeah. I think he's just going to be this big, muscular, metal Russian man. They have to make him Russian this time. How, yeah, he's got to be Russian. Yeah, they they didn't make him Russian in the last part, so they have to. They're yeah. just redoing it. They got to make him Russian. Fjorter. Right. All right. Um. I mean, so that pretty much wraps up the Marvel news. Right. Let's go to the other side of the street. Well, should we stick with the same company? Wait. Uh, Marvel. Now nah, nah, let's move on. Okay. Okay. Let's move on because that's okay. that's that deserves its own segment. Okay. That deserves its own segment. Okay. So, uh, DC. Yeah. Uh, Rumor uh, that they could be introducing Red Hood, which is Jason Todd, yep. in the Batman versus Superman movie. Which I think it would be really cool. I don't know how they're going to go about it. Yeah. Um, little background on that for people. Jason Todd was the second Robin. Um, nobody 
this being the readers, really, I really didn't like Jason Todd. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is that why the Joker killed him? Right, right. Well, they're because they did the reader poll. Yeah. And uh, the death in the family. Oh, or yeah. the one before a death in the yeah, family. Yeah, the killing joke and all that. Right. Yeah. And so they did that readers poll, like, do you want Robin to die? And everybody voted yes. Yes, get rid of him. Right. And so the Joker kills Jason Todd, and it just it it kind of wrecks Batman. It, you know, it, it really, uh, you know, tears him apart because you know it's his sidekick. Well, flash forward to the future, and it's comic books, so nobody actually dies. Yep. There's this terrible uh, villain like wreaking havoc all over the place, and is and he's the Red Hood. Okay. Red Hood turns out to be Jason Todd, and he is pissed off at Batman because Batman never avenged him. He never did anything about it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, besides be sad. <laughs> but he never avenged him, and that, and that does not sit well with him. So he becomes... The Red Hood. The Red Hood, and he's a villain and everything, which I think would be interesting to see that played out. Um, and it would also tie into... Uh, the Suicide Squad movie that's coming out because there's a rumor that the reason why Harley Quinn is not with the Joker is because the Joker has already killed Jason Todd. And the two of them are split on how they feel about the murder oh, of him. Okay. And that's why Harley Quinn is off with the Suicide Squad right. and in jail or whatever. And why uh, I think I think that they say that the premise of the movie is that their Suicide Squad is actually going after the Joker. And it could be because of the murder of Jason Todd, or it could be, um, or it could simply just be because the Joker is a maniac who needs to be right. stopped. Um, but yeah, that that's what I've heard the rumored premise of it is, and you know that would be a tie-in to Batman versus Superman, and it would just start linking everything together for DC uh, before the Justice League movie eventually comes out. Right. Well, okay, I mean that because uh, yeah, because I mean that would make a little bit more sense because. They're they're talking about Joker in Suicide Squad, but I'm like, he, he doesn't fit. He's right. Not, he's not part of the Suicide yeah, Squad. Yeah, he but can't I think he's, fit into that. He's the sort of villain that all these villains yeah. <laughs> are going after, right? For the U.S. government. So, yeah, because I was going to say that that really didn't make sense. And if that was the case, then I was going to say, yeah, DC, right? You're just you know you're doing it again. But then again, mm -hmm. the so all right. So the trailer, yeah, for D for uh, Batman versus Superman, leaked. Right. No, you know, obviously DC's probably not very happy. It was a crappy version. It was out of focus. Yeah, it was like it was a uh, somebody just filmed it on their camera. It's obviously from overseas because a lot of it is in subtitles With Spanish, and Spanish yeah. language. So, right. so and I and I've I've seen two articles. Uh, one, you know, basically blasting it, you know, not even worrying about the quality, just from the story of that, you know, what we saw in the trailer. We didn't really see all that much, though. We didn't, but, I mean, at the end, but, uh, but okay, so let me, let me, but, but the other, you know, the other story was kind of like a half and half. Mm -hmm. It said, you know, hey, you know, let's not judge it prematurely based on the quality of the clip, but from what I've seen so far, it, this does not look good because it's so dark and gritty. There's just it's too much. It's overdone. It's what DC has been saying they're going to do the whole time. Is their stuff is going to be dark and gritty and humorless, pretty much. That's what they're. That's what they're. Hey, that's what they're hanging their hat on. They're just going for it. I, 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 I mean, based on this trailer, I, I know it looks very dark. No. It just doesn't have the. Uh, it doesn't have that heroic appeal. You know what I mean? When you watch like older trailers for right. Batman or even the Man of Steel movie, um, when those trailers came out, you got the heroic vibe right. from it. You yeah. know what I mean? This yeah. is a, this is a story about a hero. You know what I mean? But this is going to be, I feel like this is just going to be such but, a totally but, different story. It's just, I, I can't get behind it because I mean, mm -hmm. that, that last scene with Batman and Superman in the rain, you yeah. know, do you bleed? Right. You will. No, that's not how it works. Right, right, right. That is not Batman and Superman. That's never been the way in the and comics. I wonder, now, I remember a while ago, because I, I had posted this on x that there was a rumor that the reason why something is going on and people have stopped trusting Superman is because someone who is very, uh, a high-ranking sort of political official ends up dying. 
Um, at first, I thought it was just because Superman couldn't start it. Then I saw other rumors that suggested that in the script that was leaked, um, somebody, um, it was a choice between saving one person and saving another person. Right. Which, to me, would suggest Superman is Superman, but he can't be two places at once. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, he- heroes have, you know, had to deal with that sort of dilemma in the past. And right. It's, it's, it's a whole thing. But um, I think what happens in it, and I wouldn't be surprised if the person who dies because of Superman's choice right. is somebody that's not close to Bruce Wayne or Batman. I, I could see it being a Commissioner Gordon type figure, right? right? So Commissioner Gordon dies. All right, so now there's this big debate about Superman. You know, is he on our side? Who is he fighting for? You know what I mean? Because maybe let's say Superman doesn't stop some other superpowered villain, and that superpowered villain is the one who kills Commissioner Gordon because Superman is, you know, he doesn't kill people. Right. And so he doesn't want to kill like he did in Man of Steel when, right. when he when he kills Zod. Right. Uh, so he goes after whoever it is, and he doesn't kill them, and then that person kills someone else. Right. But I mean, that's still, right. But that's still kind of a premise that 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 Bruce, you know, is is gonna his personal feelings get in the way of that. I mean, that's it. I wonder. I think because I mean, if it goes back to it, Batman is a hero and he's a detective and he's an investigator. Right. And I think what's going to be going on in this film from what I can see is that Bruce Wayne and as Batman is trying to decide whether or not as a group of people, because Batman trusts no one. Right. You know what I mean? He doesn't trust. I mean, if you watch justice league, the animated stuff, he doesn't watch. He doesn't trust anybody and he doesn't trust Superman. You know, he's, you know, and he's he's like the boy, he's the all American Boy Scout. You know what I mean? Yeah. As Superman is, he's from Kansas and everything like that. But Superman has unlimited power, and I think Batman needs to decide whether or not he is really on the side of good, or if he is, or if he is dangerous. I think that's I think that's the premise of the I think that's the premise of maybe the first like half. Of the movie, and right. then something happens because we're going to get introduced to Wonder Woman and right. Aquaman and the Flash and Lex Luthor, and you know what I mean. Something else happens where this they is, decide we need to work together. This, this, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean this is. I mean, from what I'm seeing, and then based on on that, and it, it sounds like you know the first episode of Gotham, where it was like, here's this one, and here's this one, and here's this one, and here's this one. You get a superhero. You yeah, get I'm a just, villain. You get a superhero. I'm just Everybody hope, does. I'm hoping that they do it right because Marvel is almost going to do the same thing in, in Age of Ultron. They're just going to throw a bunch of people at us, apparently. You know, they've said there's going to be more Marvel superheroes in this movie right. than there has been in the past. So, I mean, the, you know, I hope that they also don't do the same thing where they just are throwing cameos right. here and cameos there at us. And I hope that DC does this right. I didn't. I didn't hate the trailer, but it didn't stand out to me. I feel the same way that I feel about this trailer that I felt about Ant Man. I was just like, okay, I, I, I saw it. I, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this movie. You're not sure, right? Same yeah. thing with Fantastic Four. Like, I'm like, okay, all right, I'm going to have to wait till I know more about this and see more right. and and figure out exactly what the hell is going on. Right. Because that's what one of the biggest questions that we've had. Why the hell is it called Batman versus Superman? Right. Right. Why are they fighting each other? Yeah. They don't need to fight each other. Yeah. Just go do it's the just, damn hero stuff. I don't know. I mean, it it didn't grab me. I'm not, I'm not very optimistic now. I think it'll. I think that we have to give it more time though, because it's the first trailer. It's a leaked trailer. I'll, I'll, I'll give it so. time. I'm I'm hoping, but I mean, based on this, not, you know. By the way, did you hear that that trailer is now possibly tied to Age of Ultron? Like DC and yep. Marvel have decided that maybe yeah. they can work together on the promotion of certain things because it's the same audience yeah which makes sense to me especially since i think that when they said they were going to be putting it out with uh with the new mad max and a lot of people were kind of like i don't know if i'm gonna go see mad max um but i think that um i think that putting it with age of ultron is is cool because i think that you're gonna get the dull thud that we felt (laughs) yeah i know followed by a huge um you know it's done. And it sucks because they're doing, I feel like they're doing such a good job with DC on uh, television as far as, like, the Flash and Arrow go. But. I know. But then again, they're not, you know, they're not taking Grant Gustin and they're not taking Steve Amell. I know. And 
it would be great to see them in this uh, cinematic universe that they're establishing. But you know, who knows? They've even I mean, they've said that the Shazam film isn't going to be directly tied oh, to this universe God. either. So you're killing me, Small. I know, I know. Well, you're we'll have to me. we'll have to see. We don't have a whole lot to go on the trailer. Like I said, I feel the same way that I felt about Ant Man, and right. I'm saying that about Ant Man, and that is an MCU thing, and it's completely done by Marvel, and I am not that excited for it. You know what I mean? Right. So I mean. I, I'm. I'm. You really have to impress me after Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, a lot of people well, are the same of way Ultron. about a lot of people are the same way about Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Exactly. You know, but I have faith in Marvel because they have yet to screw me. Yeah. Unlike DC. Right. You know. So, you know, DC's basically they're in the ba- they're in the sub basement. Mm-hmm. You know, they got to work their way up to be bad. Yeah. For me. Yep. So, um, but then again. I, I'm I'm really not optimistic about it. Yeah. So, but anyway, my take is, uh-uh, didn't like it. It looks, you know, I'll I'll watch it again when they actually release it and it's a good quality, so I can kind of dissect it a little bit more. Yeah. But based on based on the audio and the story that I've gotten from the trailer, uh-uh. Well, I mean, you know, because Dare, Daredevil, we talked about this at the beginning of, of the show. Daredevil is very, very dark. Yeah. You know what I mean. But it had little bits of humor in there. It had yes. the relationship between you got Foggy it. and Karen Page, and and you know, and you you have to have those little you gotta bits have of humor. something in there. You can't just have it be straight up yeah. depressing, violence, darkness type stuff that DC is claiming that's what their universe is going to be like. Just put just put Freddy and Jason in your movies then, and call right. it a day. Exactly. So, all right. So enough about DC. Now we're gonna get to the meat and potatoes. Mm-hmm of this and i had promised that we would dissect this on this episode right so and i i I, so let me uh, let me relay my story about this so a friend of mine uh, had noticed an article online about jj abrams wearing an apple watch okay there was a you know at celebration so he goes to the link to read the story, to you know, read up about it a little bit, um, and then there's a link to the live stream for Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim that's going on right now. We're recording on a Friday. Yeah. Uh, the trailer just came out yesterday. Mm-hmm. So the star, yes, yeah, Star Wars tr- number two trailer. That's when we both got boners. Yes, uh, geek boners, not real boners, because uh, I know a real one. You can't, <laughs> I don't want to know where you were. I really like, I really like Wookies. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. This this podcast just went downhill yeah. right there. Three points. All right. All right. But anyway, so we click on it. We're watching the live stream, and we're watching Peter Mayhew and Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher talking on stage uh, with a whole row of, new, of the new Stormtroopers behind them. Mm-hmm. And they're talking Anthony Daniels as well. New Stormtrooper looked good, by the yeah, way. Yeah, looks good. And if you go to xjockalbanyny.com, Got a side-by-side picture with a breakdown of how it looks. Uh, but uh, so anyway, long story short, uh, they finish with the, you know, with the main cast there, and then they bring out BB-8 and R2-D2. Right, right. Now, this is the first mind blown uh, with BB-8. It's actually a real droid. Right. It works. They said it was practical. I don't know why I didn't believe him, but I know it, <laughs> pretty incredible. It rolled out on stage, and it was like, "Oh my God, it's right. real!" Right? Is it, are the two parts connected? Yeah, somehow they're connected. I mean, there was there was an article um, over I can't remember if it was TechCrunch or IO9 uh, talking about trying to figure out how it actually would work. Uh, who, who knows? Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to bother trying to figure it out. It's just too cool. Uh, but anyway. So JJ's on stage and he's talking a little bit, and then he says, "How would everybody like to see the second trailer for Star Wars?" Everybody flips out. Yeah. And me and Drew and a couple other friends that are watching, we're like, "Yes, yes, 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 yes!" Whip out our iPhones. We're ready to take photos and video just as you know, just so we have something. Yeah. And then, boom! Drop the curtain. Thanks for watching the live stream of Star Wars. I'm not. I, I can't. I'm not entirely shocked. Because of one, what you were going to do as to why they didn't do that. Still, <laughs> they could at least share it online while we were yeah, there. But yeah. no, I ended up having. I so after that, I was very disappointed. 
Uh, I went to lunch, got a message from a friend. Hey, it's on YouTube already. Got the link. Boom. Went there, watched it, and did. I watched it like five times on my lunch break, and yeah. just did nothing but squeal like a little girl. Oh, it was. Oh, it was. It was, it was amazing. So I still, we still don't know a whole lot about what's happening in the movie, but it was so chock full of goodies. It was so much there. Right. So much there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play it. Uh, we've got it posted over at xjockalbanyny.com. Uh, it's a very short story because I had nothing much to say about it because it was just amazing. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to play uh, the, tr- the the trailer here. So I got the audio up so we should be able to hear it. There we go. So we're starting with uh, with Lucasfilm. Can you see it? Oh, I'm going to make a bigger, big screen. Okay. So... When I first saw this scene here, we're we're, oh. we're seeing we're seeing a you know a it's huge the, sand it's, dune. It's clearly it clearly Tatooine. It's Tatooine, yes. And out in the distance, we're seeing uh, something just kind of driving by. Is that an uh? So is that right there? Right there in the foreground X-wing? is an X wing, okay. a crashed X wing. Okay, which is cool. Now, when I first saw this, so cool. I, I wasn't sure if this was the right link. I thought. Oh, great. This is some jackass in a Mustang just driving in the desert. Yeah. You know, making yeah. a, a fan trailer, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's it's the real deal. So as we're watching it and it pans to the right, yeah. then we see a crashed Star Destroyer behind it. Just deep, deep in the deep sand. Deep into the sand. It's am- It must have hit hard. Amazing. The force is strong in my family. Okay, so let's stop right there. Yeah. Mark Hamill. Yep. Voiceover. Luke Skywalker. Yep. This is from Return of the Jedi. This is lines from Return of the Jedi mm-hmm. uh, when he's talking to Leia in the uh, Ewok village. Yeah. And you hear the Vader breath. Yep. My father has it. We see a picture of Vader. Uh, he, basically, everything he well, not says. Not a picture of I think that's a melted Vader helmet. They made it, yeah. Like he kept that. Or found it. Or well, I mean, we don't know. I think he kept it. You think he did? I think he's a little twisted. Okay. But anyway, as he's you know as he's saying these lines, my father had it. You know, you're seeing the characters he's talking about. Yep. So we see Vader's mask. I have it. He has okay, it. Okay, so right there, that's that, that's him, right? That's got to be it's, him because, because that's his hand. Right. It's the fake. It's the metal hand. Right. 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 It's yeah. He's obviously had an upgraded hand done, but yep. yeah, he's placing his hand. On R two, mm-hmm. you know that's on R two, which is also just yeah. so cool. It, that's that's oh, him. God, my sister has it. All right, so now we're assuming because it's somebody handing somebody else a lightsaber, and right. the lightsaber is Anakin's original lightsaber uh, that uh, you know he had when. Like during Kenobi, the Clone Wars and stuff? Yeah, that okay. Kenobi yeah, that, yeah, when Kenobi defeated him uh on Mustafar okay. and took it and then gave it to Luke. Same lightsaber. Luke so lost it. So somebody went and got it? So yeah, because Luke lost it. That was the one right. that, that Vader cut out of his hand cut his hand off with yeah. at Bespin. So somebody found the lightsaber. Right. And is handing it to somebody. So I'm guessing one of the hands has to be Leia. One of them has got to be Leia. Right. Obviously. Um, I'm guessing maybe Leia is giving it to right somebody else. Somebody else. Well, because the other hand that is giving it looks like a an older woman's hand, it's got, as opposed to the hand that's receiving it yeah. looks like a younger person. Right. So, but anyway, so Luke Anakin's old lightsaber yep. is being handed to somebody. You have that power too. So who does he mean there? And that's see that's the thing that we don't know. We don't know who he means. All right, so now we're seeing a bunch of X wings. We're seeing, uh, I think, it's, I think Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac. I think the, his character's name is Poe. Uh, Poe. Yeah, something like. Yeah. That. Uh, just flying, and then oh, and then we got a quick shot of, um, oh, man. Now I can't remember his name. Uh, oh, man, why is can't it I? Kylo Ren? Kylo Ren. That's, that's it. Little, yeah. Yes, I knew it was a K. <laughs> Kylo Ren. Yep. Just a quick little bit of him with a lightsaber. Right. And there's talk about red lightsaber. So red. is that him with the in, in the woods in the first trailer? Yes, Kylo okay. Ren. So it was clearly dark side. Well, that's maybe that's maybe the, not. that's the thing that's that's going around. Is it? Uh, you know, is he? You know, is he going? He's not full. He's not fully Sith. Right. Maybe he's an Inquisitor. Maybe he's. Oh, well, maybe yeah. You know, we don't know. 
Um, but there was also uh, at celebration somebody. There was there was a picture of that lightsaber, his lightsaber, mm -hmm. and it looked very choppy. And somebody thought, you know, maybe this was the same one that a certain Padawan made in Star Wars Rebels. Mm -hmm. It was very similar. So now there's people thinking, well, is it, you know, well, that would be interesting. You know, but who knows? Um, but all right. So then we cut to a scene with. Uh, uh, Daisy Ridley and um, John Boyega. John Boyega. And BB-8. And BB-8 in the background. And they're running from an explosion somewhere in the desert. And if you look, as you're freeze framing, you look way up in the upper oh. left-hand corner, there's a TIE fighter. Yeah. Oh, where'd that come because from? Because we already know the, the, the Empire is defeated, but it's not gone. Right. It just doesn't have a stranglehold on everybody anymore. Right. So, I mean, and this has been going on for, like, what, 30 years. Right. So, okay, so boom. There's Kylo again. Yep. Hand up. You know, I'm using the force. I'm yep. giving you a throat hug. And then we cut to a scene of... The new stormtroopers. The new stormtroopers. What is that? That's an, some sort of... Big, big banner. Yeah, like some... Imperial, some new, yeah. The new imperial, uh, you know, Hillary crest Clinton's or something. logo. That's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hillary, you know, are you Sith? Are you Dark Side? Right. Another shot of Daisy, a couple, couple ties. And then a, a TIE fighter blowing up a hangar. Yep. Bunch of stormtroopers shooting at it. People flying all over the place. Special effects. Just, you know, boom, boom, boom. And then John Boyega uh, whipping off his helmet. Uh, very, yeah, he's dressed as a stormtrooper. He's dressed as a stormtrooper. Just like in the first one. Right. So First trailer, I should say. Yeah. So who knows what's going on here. I mean, but his armor is very dirty, so... Yeah, and I'm guessing by by the background he's on whatever you know a ship that maybe had all those Tie Fighters. Maybe he's yeah. That. But then we cut to a new Star Destroyer with a bunch of uh, shuttles mm -hmm. flying towards it. Um, and then was that another Kylo Ren shot? I don't know. What I don't was th that? It wasn't a Kylo Ren shot. It was somebody. It was it's Stormtrooper armor, but it's. Silverish. It's more badass looking. It's more, yeah. So maybe this is the Inquisitor and the others. Is Who knows? We don't know. We have no idea. We have zero clue. And then a little shot of uh, BB-8 kind of poking out, mm -hmm. kind of scared. Oh, don't be scared, BB-8. And then another shot of Daisy, Boyega, yep. Daisy's hand, obviously. Uh, take my hand. Uh, come with me to Never Never Land. Yeah. And there's the Millennium Falcon being... Right. being uh, Chased down by some TIE fighters. By one TIE fighter. Flying through the carcass of... And it, it looked like, what, like a block, like a rebel blockade ship? It could have been a... No, nah, blockade runners aren't that big. No, I'm I don't guessing, know. So I don't know what that is. It could have been a Mon Calamari cruiser, or it oh, could have okay. been a, a part of the Star Destroyer. Yeah, it could have been. Don't know. Well, I don't know. It was the Star Destroyer wasn't over Tatooine. Yeah, that was, remember, when, in the beginning? when the Oh, yeah, the know? first one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But then here comes the part that pretty much made every geek... In the world, cry. Chewie, we're home. Beautiful. It's the first time that you've seen anything. I mean, so you get the Mark Hamill voiceover, but then you get the full on Harrison Ford as Han Solo and Peter Mayhew standing next to him as Chewbacca. And he's got his bow no less. Chewbacca looks fantastic. He hasn't aged a day. I know. I mean, can't say the same for old Han. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Han's a little older. I mean, but Chewie, I mean, a Wookiee, I don't know how long a Wookiee really lives. Yeah, no idea. I mean, Yoda was, what, thousands of years old? So. Yeah, he was, yeah, I and mean, he was like 900 years old when right. he was on Kashyyyk. So, uh, and Chewie was there. I mean, but obviously, I mean, I'm guessing, I mean, Chewie looked like he was, you know, he was an adult. Mm -hmm. So, I'm guessing... You know, maybe they live 200, 300 years. Who knows? Could be. Could be. You never know. But, I mean, yeah. Obviously, they're inside the Millennium Falcon. Uh, it looks like it looks like Harrison is holding a blaster, but I can't tell if it's his, if his blaster or not. But, um, obviously, Chewie's got the bowcaster. Mm -hmm. So, that's the cool part. So, that was the part that made everybody cry. That even, was, yeah. Even Matthew McConaughey. Right. So. Hey, Star Wars, the Force... Awakens, and you know it's fun. It's funny to me what the whole thing is. They are really, really are staying away from Episode Seven. They are saying the Force Awakens. They're right. not calling it Star Wars Episode Seven. The Force Awakens. Star Wars. The Force Awakens. 
Titans. Well, that was what they did with the other ones. I mean, it right. was, you know, the Phantom Menace. Right. You know. But at least, like, within, like, the titles and stuff, episode. Right. right. I mean, when you see The Crawl, obviously. Episode four, five, six, yeah, they were in there. The Crawl, you're going to see episode. I'm betting you see episode seven. If no you doubt. Don't, that would be weird. Yeah. If you don't, it's it's weird. It's very weird. So, um, but, yeah, that's that's the breakdown. And, oh, my God. Does that have you more? Is Are you more excited for that than you were about hearing that it is definitely going to be Peter Parker? In these Marvel oh, movies. Oh, that's right. We forgot about that. That's, yeah. No, we, I don't know. There's not much to touch on with that. I know. There really isn't. But I was I'm, I'm, I was happy. Yeah. I wasn't as happy as when this came out. Right. But I was Would happy. you have been as happy if they didn't include the Han and Chewie bit at the end? Because I don't know if I would have been as excited. Because there's I, been more of the same. I would have been excited, but that is what basically made me pee my pants. Right, right, right. You know? So that right there, have, seeing Han and, and, and Chewie. Mm-hmm. I've just brought it all home. That's good stuff. Now, but another thing too, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write something about this on XJock, uh, you know, over at xjockalbanyny.com, um, is you know during the panel of celebration, going back to my story at the beginning, you didn't see Harrison, but obviously for obvious reasons, he, he, you know he's not a fan of it. He, you know, he, the only reason he did it was because they threw money at him. Yeah. And the other rumor is that he had to be able to do another couple of Indiana Jones movies or or be a part of Indiana Jones movies, because he loves Indiana Jones. Right. But he's not a big fan of Star Wars. Not a big fan of this space stuff. Yeah, he likes, but... I mean, Even though that's what made me. Yeah, exactly, but still. <laughs> I, you know, I, but you're gonna, I'm, I'm going to write an open letter to Harrison Ford about this. Right. Please get on board, sir. Yes. I mean, well, it's not Clearly that. Clearly we've seen the success of these. They're, they're, they're going to make it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, well... You, when you read it, you'll read it. Okay. That's, I mean, that's all I'm saying. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, but, I mean, that right there was the thing that basically made my week. Yeah. No, that was great. It was I loved it. Awesome. If you had to if you had to rank them as far as the trailers that came out this week, I would say three, Batman vs. Superman, two, Ant-Man, and then number one, Star Wars, without question. Way, I would, way, way, way far out in the way league. Way, yeah. I mean, Star Wars, way, way, way number one. Right. Uh, Ant Man definitely number two. Yeah. Well, no, Age of Ultron number two. Was that a did that trailer? Well, they, no, they didn't come out. No, no I'm sorry, is... we're talking about the ones that yeah. did came out. So Ant Man number two. Yeah. Uh, Batman versus Superman. Like I said, sub basement in the you know beyond the. <laughs> well, cellar. that's level three. <laughs> that's you know if you're playing Minecraft, we're talking below the bedrock. Yeah. So if you don't know Minecraft, trust me, it's bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So I mean, that's I just. Oh man, this is so good. I mean, well, we I, want we want your feedback on yes, it too. So please give us your feedback. XJockalbanyny.com. Put it in the comments. Yeah. Let us know what you think about this awesome trailer. Right. I mean, there's some people that said I actually read something where people said eh, it didn't really appeal to me. Well, I mean, Dave, if you disagree with us too, disagree with us. You know, because yeah. Big Rich and I are on opposite sides of the Batman versus Superman. I didn't hate it. He yeah. hated it. You know, if you uh, if you are you know somewhere someone who loved it and think it's going to be fantastic, then you know let us know that too. Right. And also, don't forget to uh, you know if you're listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher to give us a nice review. Yeah, give us a review, rate us. I mean, even on Podcastpedia or even uh, Blueberry uh, dot com, please. I mean, right. just you know, especially on Stitcher and iTunes, those are the two. If you could give us give us a little love, that's all we're asking for. Okay. And uh, thanks again to all the new followers on uh, on Twitter. Yeah, we love you. Yep, and if you want to be a part of that, it's at Xjock Albany uh, on uh, Albany NY, I should say, on uh, on Twitter. And you can also find us on Facebook. Uh, it's Xjock Albany NY. I mean, I'm sensing a theme there. Yeah. So we're we're branded very well. We're branded very well. Yes. Uh, we won't have any trouble finding us. Won't have any trouble. Oh, and another thing we should also mention is, uh, do we want to mention the the other website? Oh yeah, you can also you can you can now find we're we're very excited about this. Yeah. We were uh, we were uh, reached out to uh, by um, some of the folks over at MoviePilot.com. Um, and they wanted to spotlight some of the content that we've been creating on right. Xtrock, and uh, along with that goes the podcast. So um, if you want to find us and you have found us over on Movie Pilot, you can now catch the Geek Show on uh, MoviePilot.com. Um, you can uh, you know just search for it, but you can you can catch the Geek Show there right. as well. You're gonna yeah, so you'll be able to you'll be, and we got a lot of other things coming along mm -hmm. the line too. Uh, so just you know stay with us. We're we're working on things behind the scenes right. all the time. 
So, uh, yeah, don't forget, xjockalbanyny.com, uh, where you can find all our posts as well as these podcasts. Plus, you can also go to iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Podcastpedia, and Blueberry. You can find it all there. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'm out. We're out. So uh, until we uh, talk to you next week, stay geeky.